Routine seems like the wrong word to use for this video because my Easter routines are not very structured at all, but I still want to show you the general thing that I've been getting up to during the Easter holidays. The most important thing always is mornings and waking up early. I want to carve and create magic and magic is something you must look for. If you keep your eyes open, you'll find it. So I go outside first thing and I look at the breaking morning. Then I spend basically the whole morning studying. I just sit at my desk and I do dissertation work for the whole of the morning and then after lunch, I try and leave this space completely free. And it's those afternoon activities that I want to focus on in today's video. So very intentionally over the Easter holidays, I haven't booked up a lot of things. For the last week, there are things that I have booked, but for the majority of the Easter holidays, I just have not booked anything. I have not seen any friends. I have not gone out. I have lived like a hermit. I'm so pleased that I have. At the beginning of the Easter holidays, I had all of these plans for people I wanted to see, um, really fun um, out there things I wanted to do. But I realised that I was just so tired after the term that the best thing I could possibly do would be to just like really focus on resetting and recharging and resting. But basically for my Easter routine, as it were, I study in the mornings and then in the afternoons I focus on doing things that aren't studying, which are creative, that are outside, you know, like things in nature. So I've been doing a lot of writing, lots of walks, um, lots of just sitting outside reading. Today, uh, the first thing... I'm gonna do for like my afternoon activities is do some animations like make some animations so I have made animations before in Procreate very basic ones um, but I'm gonna do a Skillshare course on animating in Procreate just to hopefully get a little bit better and this video is very kindly sponsored by Skillshare Skillshare is the world's largest learning community and it's a space where you can learn basically any skill I don't want to say any skill but there are so many skills that you can learn when you scroll through you just kind of are bombarded with the amount of possible skills that you can learn and they have these things called learning paths which are where they compile classes from different teachers and put them all together in one space um, so you can learn from lots of different people at once but it's all focused on one particular topic and skill and as I'm doing the course I'm gonna make some animation and I will put one of the animations somewhere in the video. So all of these here are learning paths for animation which are bringing together lots of different classes. I'm gonna go for this one Let's see how this goes. I really do enjoy using Procreate. Like I'm not the best at it, but I really want to get better. And so I'm excited to do this course. If you do want to try using Skillshare, then I do have a link and the first 500 people to click it can get one month for free of Skillshare. So I basically spent an hour doing some of this learning path and I made two mini animations. I made this little ink bottle one with a feather quill, which I'll just put on the screen so you can see. But keep an eye out for the other one, which it's not brilliant, but I'm hoping I will get better over time. Their colors come swiftly. Tufts of wave running for the shore. Oh, that's the bluebell grass, you whisper, to the green hairs under the treehouse, lilac at first, like palmer violets, and taut as fishing wire. When will they break, you ask, and we go outside in the mornings to check, so early that the daisies are pink and sleeping, our pyjamas are badly buttoned and damp with dew. What have you been doing, Mum will ask later. We want to be the first to see them when they come, in fairy circles we know not to join, but still do. I'd like to dance forever, under moonlit forest lights, dance forever. We listen for their silent song. Why are they called bells, you ask, and I like that you ask because it means I can show you. You'll see, I say. The bluebells darken as April loosens, until one morning their buds break open like conger shells, several of them, all at once. They cup the sun in goblets of light for their sisters, to the cold lilac buds, sip from the sunlight and make yourself strong. You understand their name when they drop. Violet church bells with ears hearkened for new soil and hope. We couldn't hear the song, but we felt it with our fingers when we rang their wings on that damp April morning. A song for the twilight fairies we still believed would come. They spread along the hedgerows in vibrant waves, tall as our kneecaps, surrounded by bees, dozens of them which made you scared. They never last long, and two weeks later they were dead. Shriveled at first, and then, almost suddenly, the grass was just grass, the bees were silent, and the fairies were gone. 
You didn't ask if they'd come back. I don't know how you knew. Set off forget-me-nots. We get so many forget-me-nots in our garden every year. They populate all of the vegetable patches. As you can see, they're all along here. So I think I might pick a load of these to press because they won't stay up for too long and they're so beautiful to use in letters. I just adore spring. It makes me so sad because I'm actually leaving today for Oxford and this is the last time I'm going to be in the garden while it's spring. I never really used to appreciate flowers. I thought flowers were quite boring when I was a kid because they didn't have a use. You know, like with fruit and vegetables, they had a use, so they felt more interesting to me. But the wonderful thing about flowers is exactly that, they don't have a use. Their use is the fact that they're able to bring joy and they bring colour and they bring scent and that they're so momentary and they're ephemeral that they're only here for such a short time. Like bluebells are the most glorious, glorious flowers, um, well, and snowdrops, but both because they don't last for very long at all and you know that you have to look out for them. Like there's only one particular tiny, tiny window of the world, a pocket of the year where you're going to be able to see them. Whereas with something like potatoes, even if you only harvest them once, they're available all year round because we can get them in supermarkets. It means even something like blueberries, it's kind of lost that specialness um, because we can get them all year round from supermarkets. Whereas with flowers, you can only see them and you can only access them and you can only smell them once a year. And I think with consumer culture, we don't necessarily have enough of that. I think that's why I love flowers so much though. It's in the same way, you know when you, I'm um, starting to take my hair because it's kind of hurting. The idea of being a tourist in your own city, that there are things that are really nearby to you that you really want to go and see and you really want to go and do, but you never do them because you know that they're always there. So there's not an urgency to make the most of them or make the most of the opportunity. And then it's really funny because you can spend your whole life living somewhere and never do the things that you always meant to do and the things you always wanted to do there whereas if you were to visit there for just three days you would probably do all of those things and I think it's the same thing with like with flowers if we had access to oh wow look at that crow I think it's the same thing with flowers if we still had access to them all of the time would we still make an effort to go out into the woodland and find them while they were here would you would you kind of make it an event, a task to go out and find the bluebells while you can. I don't think so because you know that you could do it at any other time and any other point and that's what makes the season so wonderful. I'm now actually going to show you a different day where, again, of course, I'm spending lots of time outside. Truly, this is my favourite thing to do in the spring. I'm now going on a walk. Honestly, this is one of the things I'm going to miss most when I'm back at university. I'm excited for time to start, but also, I miss the countryside. Oh dear, the storm Kathleen last night. Now I haven't done gymnastics for ages, like I don't think I did it at all last summer and today I'm just really in the mood 
to practice some odd skills so I'm going to go and do that now and I'm actually really looking forward to it so I'll get changed first of all. <laughs> Okay, I'm already. I'm wearing my Wuthering Heights sweatshirt, and I'm just trying to work out whether to get out my whole air track or to just be lazy and get my mat out. Lola. block and the mat. come back inside and I'm going to make an ice cream in the Ninja Creamy. This is actually incredible. You can make just ice cream so easy. You just leave this in the freezer overnight. I'm sure you've heard of it actually. I'm saying it like it's this really novel thing, but I saw it all over the all over social media. So this is an Oreo flavored one and I just used the Oatly um, Soda Cream as the base. And you lock it in. And actually, like, I'm not the biggest ice cream fan usually, so I'm quite fussy with which ice creams I like. However, this is great because you can customize how sweet you have it. And then you just click ice cream. Oh, it's come out very, very smooth. It has been a little while since I last filmed. I've had dinner, I also had a shower. So I then edited some of this memory video. I try to make memory videos every quarter. So this is the one for Hillary term, which is January through to the end of March. And then I wanted to go outside. It was quite cold, but my book was sitting there and there is nothing quite like reading outside, especially in spring and summer. I just finished reading Gallant and it was excellent. I just love the E. Schwab's writing so much. Her writing style alone just makes it worth reading anything she's written. I was trying to think of how best to describe it. It's like a spell. It's like reading an ancient spell because it's lyrical and kind of, you know, like slightly musical in the way that you would expect a spell to be. I love that there's this kind of faint magic, these slightly fantastical illusions. It definitely veered much more into fantasy at the end um, and I'm not usually the biggest fan of fantasy but I still enjoyed it and I would recommend. Also can you hear the birds? They've been singing so much while I've been reading. 
but I'm freezing cold, so I am going to go inside. <laughs> Should we go inside? Oh, it's open! It is open! she's barking because she's hungry. To be fair, she's always hungry. Stay, 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 no. <laughs> oh. As per usual, I completely forgot to film an outro, so I'm just going to pop on to say thank you so much for watching um, this routine, which really isn't much of a routine. Um, it's just three stages of my day, um, waking up early to go outside studying and then spending the afternoon doing creative activities and cozy things in nature basically. Um, thank you again so much Skillshare for sponsoring today's video as well and I hope that you have more than just a productive week. Bye.